Hello, welcome to Surrey TV. I'm Victoria Durant, and this week we're at Surrey's largest independent real ale producer, the Hogsback Brewery. Time for a quick pint? Come on then. Comedy Night returns for its second month at the Star Inn in Guildford next weekend. The inaugural night of this regular start of the month was a huge success and the Star Inn Guildford was hailed as a perfect venue for such an evening's entertainment. This month's guests include Chris Mayo, Jojo Giorgio and Alan Francis. The night will again be hosted by the wonderful Deborah Jane Appleby. Deborah Jane's confident and punchy hosting keeps the night flowing and makes for some good hearted belly laughs. There are still some tickets available from kickbackcomedy.com or from the tourist office in Guildford High Street. It's advisable to book now as these tickets will get hotter and hotter as Abby Bagley, the club's creator and organiser, brings even more well-known acts to the town in the months to come. That's kickbackcomedy.com or the Guildford tourist office in the High Street. Most of us enjoy a good pint, but here's a man who enjoys making one. It's Miles, who is the head brewer at the Hogsback Brewery. So Miles, um, tell us briefly, how is the process, um, how does it happen, making a beer? Okay, um, so pretty much starts from the farm. Mm -hmm. So uh, main ingredient of our beer is barley malt. Mm -hmm. um, so that's barley from the fields, goes into a, a malting, um, and what they do is they change some of the sugar to starches to expose some sugars. Um, we get the, the barley malt in, um, we, we mill it to expose some of the starch that we want to convert into fermentable sugars. It goes into the brew house, process of um, temperature, time, um, produces a fermentable extract that we take mm. off. So um, we get a liquid off um, that's known as wort. Um, we boil it, we add some hops to it um, in the brew house, we cool it and transfer it to a fermenter. Add some yeast, um, let it ferment merrily for uh, from some sort of four to seven days. Mm. Uh, what that does, it produces your alcohol, it gives you some carbon dioxide there, and produces heat. At the end of that process, process, we'll transfer it to a conditioning tank for sort of a minimum of a couple of days. Um, that gets some of the yeast out of suspension, rounds some of the flavours off, um, and from there we'll either take it off site to be bottled, or we'll put it into cask um, for, for the pub trade and for people to enjoy. And Fantastic. that is brewing in a nutshell. Wow. As river levels on the Thames start to fall, work is now underway to help communities get back on their feet. Surrey County Council have told us that residents who are wondering what to do with their sandbags are assured that they are welcome to keep them for future use. It is not advisable, however, to store the ones that have been soaked in the flood water. Residents should note that when handling wet sandbags, it's best to wear rubber gloves and not to split the bags open. You should also wash your hands thoroughly afterwards. The team at Surrey County Council further advise that when you are ready to dispose of the sandbags, this can be done free of charge at community recycling centres. Both the Marty's Lane Recycling Centre in Woking and the Charlton Lane Recycling Centre in Shepparton will exchange your old wet sandbags for dry ones. Kingston-based charity job launched its competition The Dream Candidate last week. The competition is designed to help young job seekers find work in the charity sector. Charity Job has the UK's busiest website for jobs in the market and launched the competition at the start of National Careers Week. The winners will have their details circulated to Charity Job's database of 20,000 charity employers. 
The competition will run until May, but people are encouraged to enter as soon as possible. Steve Wexler, director of Charity Job, says there are a million unemployed young people aged 18 to 24 in Britain. We want to help them find employment in the charity sector. It's tough finding work, so we want to make it fun by launching this competition via social media. Steve will be joining us in the coming weeks to let us know about how the competition is going. But in the meantime, you can find out more by visiting the website dreamcandidate.me. some stargazing in Meadowbank Recreation Ground in Dorking on the 7th of March. Not celebrity spotting, but an astronomical extravaganza for everyone who looks up to the skies at night and wonders what's going on up there. Dorking-based Astronomania will be hosting their Tour of the Universe gathering to mark the end of National Astronomy Week. All are welcome and anyone with a telescope is welcome to bring it along, although it's asked that you let Astronomania know if you're bringing a telescope with you. Of special interest that evening will be Jupiter. The planet will be at its highest point in the sky, meaning you will have the clearest view of the planet's hydrogen band and its four Galilean moons. This is a great evening out and a unique free introduction to the wonders of stargazing. The telescope lenses will be open at 6pm and close at around 9pm. Refreshments have been organised by Transition Dorking and the Dorking Brewery will have a selection of their beers available as the Martinio Brass Quintet gently play a selection of their repertoire. Tuesday the 4th of March sees the annual Great Guildford Pancake Race. The event that always draws a big crowd on the day will begin with registration at 11am in the High Street. Organised by the Charlotteville Jubilee Trust, the race event has grown in size every year, along with the spectators that head to Guildford High Street to watch. It's a fun lunch break event that welcomes all and encourages everyone to have some fun. If you or your company would like to enter a team, there is still time. Call 01483 598 420. A date for your diary is Farnham Banger Rally and I've got with me here the organiser of the event, Darren Stone. So Darren, tell us about the event. The event is, uh, is, a, is for charity. It's um, you spend up to three hundred and fifty pounds on a car, mm -hmm. such as uh, such as this one here. This beauty yeah, behind us. This beauty, <laughs> and, um, and uh, it's it's a four day four day three night event. Yeah. Um, departing Farnham on the twenty eighth of August. Um, we then drive to um, the east of Paris. Mm. Um, we, we then camp camp the east of Paris, drive through Paris to Le Mans. From Le Mans, we go to Rouen, and then we return to Farnham, hopefully, on the um, 31st of August. Safe and sound. Uh, hopefully safe and sound. <laughs> um, and it's, uh, you can enter for £250 for um, two people yeah. and their car, which includes camping, um, a rally t-shirts, rally car stickers, um, and, a, and a finishing party. Um, and, and also then, a breakfast, is that oh, right? A, yeah. A break, a Don't forget the breakfast. A breakfast on the first day. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and and really, it's it, it's for two local charities. Yeah. And we're hoping to raise as much money as possible. Oh, brilliant! And what are the charities that you're uh, raising for? The charities are Phyllis Tuckwell Hospice in Farnham. Yeah. Um, and step by step, young persons homeless charity in Aldershot. Oh, great! So it's really good causes locally yeah. to us. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah, very, very good causes. Yeah. Oh, it sounds like it's going to be so much fun. Uh, good I, luck with it all. Hopefully. And then you're going to do little challenges and things. It's uh, lots, yes. lots going on. Um, with it. On, a, on a daily basis, we're probably only going to drive about 200 miles per day. Yeah. But we're throwing some challenges there to make your day exciting. Ah. Um, uh, and um, yeah, it, it should be, it should be very very good fun and you if anyone wants to enter yeah they can enter on our website which is farnhambangarally.org.uk the entry forms on there um, and uh, also we are looking for corporate sponsors yeah so we have three at the moment 
um, which is um, we have Burns and Weber on board, we have Technics Group in Guildford on board, and we have Simprove in Farnham on board. But we're we're looking for for many more corporate sponsors. So lots of sponsors, please, and lots of people entering. It's going to be so much fun. Thank you so much, Darren. That's no problem. <laughs>of Life Form 3, Ross Morris will be signing copies of her book at Barton's Bookshop in Leatherhead on Saturday the 7th of March. The book has been given some great reviews recently. Some readers have said, it really stole my heart. If you believe literary fiction is boring, read this. Lyrical, beautifully visual, a wonderful, intimate fable. We're mentioning this early as Ross is also a writing coach and teaches a masterclass in self-publishing for The Guardian. This signing will be busy as Ross will be only too happy to discuss all aspects of her writing and yours during the signing, including how to get your first book published and which route might be best to do so. The event begins at 10am and will continue until 4pm. After a run of dubious results that have left the Flames six points off the top of the league, the team convincingly won their sellout game against the Swindon Wildcats, 4-1 at the Guildford Spectrum. Their next home game is on Sunday the 2nd at 6pm against MK Lightning from Milton Keynes. It will be a heated evening of sporting entertainment as these two teams have history. perfect pint truly is an art. It requires a lot of skill, patience and passion and those ingredients certainly are present here at the Hogsback Brewery. Thanks for watching Surrey TV, take care and enjoy the county. Lots of gold, make it lots of eight. Warm hands, warm face, warm feet. Oh, wouldn't it be lovely? Oh, so. Sorry, I'm just going to stop. I'm just uh, getting way too carried away now.